We've got Dave Walker in the program. Hello, Dave. Are you there? You've got a very squeaky chair. I have got a squeaky chair. I'm just trying to, um, just trying to correct that. If I keep perfectly still, it may not squeak. <laughs> Dave, lovely to meet you, and uh, thank you so much for dropping You're by. You're very welcome. So you were born in Liverpool, but you live in Southport now? Yes. Okay, yeah. and how did you get into music? What sort of childhood did you have in Liverpool? Are you a red or a blue? You're not bothered. I, I, well, I was a blue, and <clears throat> I was a season ticket holder for years and years and years. Right. But I actually stopped going to football matches when I was attacked by a bunch of Everton fans <laughs> who assumed I was a Cockney Tottenham supporter on the grounds that I wasn't wearing a blue scarf. <laughs> no. I was once attacked by Man United fans. In fact, I was knocked unconscious because I, I stupidly uh, made the mistake. Uh, you see, Hull, you see, my team, we're amber and black. So, uh, for some reason, I was going to, to a Coventry Man United match when I was at Warwick University. And I, for some reason, I was stupidly wearing my Hull scarf. And, uh, they, and apparently Man U had just played Wolves the week before and probably ah. lost. So, mm -hmm. I literally got attacked by three or four of them. It was a really weird experience. And there was a police on the opposite side of the road who took absolutely, you know, blind eye job, mm. blind eye jobs. Well, I was, I was very quick, very fast, <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, I managed to escape. The there was about ten of them, they killed me if they got me. Well, I got into the, I kind of staggered in through the turnstile and this woman came up and thought I was drunk, you see, they thought I was drunk <laughs> because I was kind of staggered. But anyway, we can laugh about it now, but pretty <laughs> horrific uh, at the time. So, uh, what about sort of childhood did you have? What about St. Liverpool? I lived in Aintree, very, very close to the race course. Um, uh, my dad was um, a musician for, for most of his young life. He was a professional drummer. Right. Uh, and also a keyboard player, well, piano player mainly. Um, he was a member of a band called Bob Miller and the Miller Men. He was the drummer in that, and they were quite big, apparently, in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was very, very young, uh, f first... I don't remember it, but first two or three years of my life. We used to spend all summer in the Isle of Man because my dad used to have a summer season there at the Villa Marina. Oh, right. So, yeah. So, musical background in the, yeah. in the jeans. Uh, well, my dad, did give my dad anything and he would have played it. Give him half an hour with any instrument and he will get, an, a, a, he would have got a sound out of it, yeah. 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 So as a child, who did you listen to? You're too young for the Beatles, are you or not? Yeah, I kind of, uh, I, yeah, I was, I was born in 1959. Yeah. So, uh, sort yeah. of, I, yeah. I don't remember anything about no. the yeah. 60s at all, really. Um, I think the first person who really sort of got to me, if you like, would be David Bowie. Right. When I was a kid, and I, I, I heard Space Oddity. And I was 10 when it came, I remember, I know I was, because it came out in 1969. I don't think it was a major hit till 71 or something, but, but it came out in 1969. And I remember hearing it on the radio thinking. It was a big hit because of the Apollo 11 yes, that's in right, 69. Yeah. It may have come out. I think it came out again after that. But anyway, yeah. I remember listening to it and thinking, hmm, that's interesting. So what was the first instrument that you took up? Acoustic guitar? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, did you write poetry as a child? Um, no, I went straight on to songs, really. Mm. Um, I, I thought, because what it was, was I wasn't very good on the guitar. So I thought the only way to make sure that I can play all the chords in the songs is to actually write them. Right. So that was my way of, of <laughs> getting around the fact that uh, I, at that time I knew half a dozen chords. <laughs> did you learn the, ele did you play the electric guitar as well? Yeah. Yeah. Now you're in some pain, David. Tell us about this. Well, I'm in pain for two reasons. One, I can't really play anymore. I am going to try and play live here a couple of songs mm. later on. But I had an accident at work um, three years ago now, which rendered me basically my right arm doesn't work. What, sort of, what sort of work? Uh, I worked for Revenue and Customs, but um, thank <laughs> thankfully I don't anymore. <laughs> but they tried to kill me. Um, essentially, they they gave me a chair following a unauthorized office move, and it disintegrated when I sat on it. Right. Um, and so the, the right arm, and particularly the wrist and the hand, doesn't work at all, really. Um, and of course, having to do everything left-handed, it means that, that the left shoulder's a bit knackered as well. But the real reason I'm in pain at the moment was, uh, I know we're going to touch on this later, but a year ago, I had a place in Sheffield as well uh, with my girlfriend. And, and I volunteered to do a um, mini triathlon indoors in, in a big gym in the centre of Sheffield. Um, and that is basically five miles on a treadmill, five miles swimming, and five miles on a bike. Sorry, kilometers. Slightly right. easier. No, no, no. Um, so, and of course, as we'll talk about later, some, something happened that meant that I didn't do it. But I had lots of sponsorship money, so somebody put that in a high interest deposit account on the understanding that I would do it again this year. And I did it on Friday. And I thought I got away with it, because yesterday I didn't feel too bad, but today... I feel like I've been run over by a combine harvester and scraped up with a rake, to be honest with you. So you're on painkillers, Dave? Yeah. 
Do we call you David? David? Does well, either, will either do? Well, yeah, I suppose uh, most people call me Dave. My, if my mother was still alive, she'd go crazy because um, <laughs> it had to be David. I christened you David, not, not <laughs> Dave. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, you've just come out with this amazing double album, and I'm not just saying that because you're here. It does actually say here, Parental Advisory Explicit Lyrics. Is, yeah. that, is that just on one track? Is it, well, it's, it's almost inaudible, but because <laughs> it, it is. It's the end of one track called WTF, which will give you some idea yes, of exactly. what the explicit lyric okay, is. Yeah. And it's faded into the back, and it wasn't actually on that track. Right. It was somewhere else, and I'd got a, a lyric wrong and came out with that phrase, um, WTF, and Tom, the producer, decided it would go very well at the end of the song. <laughs> so without my knowledge, you put it on this, but you, you do, ha even though it's almost inaudible, and in fact, if you download the tracks to buy them, it wouldn't be there. Right. Now, you're a bit of an actor as well. You're involved mm. with the Formby Little Theatre. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been involved with them? About five, six years now. I was involved yeah. with the Little Theatre in Southport for a while. Um, right. I was right. involved with the Neptune Theatre Company in Liverpool. Right. Um, professional shows as well with Threadbare Theatre Company. So, I've always, I've always been involved in that since I was a kid. I love the launch of your album. As you know, I was there with mm -hmm. uh, Sue and uh, was it Heather and someone. Yeah. But uh, obviously, didn't get much chance to talk to you then because it was busy. And George Windsor was there. Now, did George tell you when I started teaching way back in the seventies? He was actually a pupil. That's how old I am. That George Windsor, a bit of a scallywag, but lovely lad. Yes. When, when he was were you school. the one who? Did with <laughs> He didn't yes. recognise me initially, I'm uh, surprised at that, but he did uh, recognise me eventually, because uh, your launch at the Metro, did you launch at the Burtdale Conservative Club or was that called? No, we were going to, um, right. there was a couple of problems there, um, the person who was originally going to compare the, the host the whole evening for me, who for various reasons we won't go into why he didn't, but anyway, um, he couldn't make the original date that we had at the Burtdale right. Conservative Club, and so I put it back for a week, but then the Burtdale Conservative Club was already booked, right. so we ended up right. at, at the. But having said that, that originally we were at the Latin Lounge, which um, oh yeah, which closed down, which closed down, yeah. and of course yeah. the same person had the Latin yeah. Lounge. Sandy now has the. So you used to be in a group with George, didn't you, uh, yes. George Windsor? Right. Mm. Okay, we've got loads to talk about, but let's go to a piece of music now. This is one that I've been playing on this radio station uh, and another radio station because I am essentially a blues and rock man, but I'm quite open to all types of music. I'm not all that keen on country and western. I don't know if there's any type of music, you, Dave, that you don't particularly get into. But strangely enough, country and western. Uh, <laughs> I would never say it's it, it's bad because obviously it isn't. It's incredibly popular, but it doesn't actually do a great deal for me. Can be maudlin, can it? But uh, yeah. there's, there's different types. We've just played the Saw Doctors. I mean, it's kind of, mm. uh, there are different types. Anyway, this is Die Like a Man, Live Like a Woman, yeah. or, um, <clears throat> which uh, I love this track. I've been playing it on another radio station as well. Can you tell us about this? Is this about Lisa or? No, it isn't actually. No. It's, it's, although she was partly responsible for it being written. Um, essentially, it's about choice. And um, I think that we have a situation where. If you look historically through mankind, men have always been warlike, so mm -hmm. it's quite easy to die like a man mm -hmm. and just go to war. Um, women are essentially peaceable people. I mean, there are obviously there's, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. Joan of Arc and so on who <laughs> booked the trend. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the idea of the song is if you make a choice to behave like a man in its rawest sense, you can die. Or if you want to stay alive, just just be a little bit more caring. Okay, here we go with a track from the brand new double album. Uh, half the album is poetry, the other side we've got 16 songs. This is brilliant. It's Die Like a Man. play outside in the pouring rain. Shall we bitch to the world or accept the pain? Shall we hang on an anger like terrorists and ghouls? Or could the for no reward like fools We can die like a man Or we can live like a woman We can bet it all Set it all in stone We can die like a man Or we can live like a woman Shrink away or stand up fully grown
fabulous stuff there. Uh, almost uh, forgot about that. Talking to Dave off air. Die like a man, live like a woman. Yes, yes, yes. That's track 14 of an amazing uh, soft madhead. Let's talk about why this album's called uh, Madhead. Uh, now, I have checked with Dave that he's okay talking about this because this is very personal and obviously and all that. You had this uh, relationship, this lovely relationship, mm-hmm. yes, with yes. Lisa for five years. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, there is a video where there's pictures of Lisa on. Yeah. Was yeah. that on the My Site thing? It's on the My Site, on yeah. the, the Madhead website, yeah. 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 So she was a, a, a lot younger than you, but of course that doesn't matter, does it? Because age is but no. a number when it comes to relationships. I, yeah. That's my mm. philosophy anyway. But obviously she was a lovely, attractive lady and sadly she died last August. Yes, she did, yes. Mm. So why did she call you, why did she call you Madhead? Um, well, she thought I was crazy. I think that was the... <laughs> well, she, you seem to me as a perfectly normal, uh, logical, intelligent uh, young man. Yes, well, yes, looks can be deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually what it was was that we, we both used to make each other laugh hysterically. Yes. Almost continuously. It is amazing, isn't it, the chemistry between two people, how it can oh, yeah. happen, yeah. Yeah. Um, despite age gaps and stuff like that, how did you meet Lisa? <laughs> Well, I'd known her for, I actually knew her existence from, from when she was very young because I used to teach drama to her sister. Um, and then I met her many, many years later um, <clears throat> because, well, I can't remember how it happened. Now, um, her, her sister said, do you mind if she comes with us for a drink? We're going out for a drink because she's just on her own at the moment. So that's how it started, really. But it was great. She, she was terrific fun. I mean, she had problems, but... The, the album was inspired by her. Yeah. And her memory. Um, well, not really her memory because yeah. these were all written before she died, okay. long before she died. Um, okay. is, is that a murder happening next to us? I don't know, there's it? something going on. Yeah. We, we're picking up some extraneous uh, sounds. <laughs> we may be witnesses to a murder. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there's something going on. Yeah. It's that young Ford, I think he's. Uh, is it? Anybody would think we were broadcasting from somebody's back garden. You he's, would, he's, he's got his hose out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, it's a uh, garden hose, and uh, <laughs> and uh, he's probably going to spray these windows. Oh, good. Well, no, it's the lovely Emma. It's Emma. It's Your Emma. chair's very squeaky. You don't get any WD forty with you. <laughs> Emma's out with the hose. Yes. Do you know I've got to say, Chris? The um, one thing I didn't think of was don't forget your WD forty when they said come to my seat. T- I sure I told you, Wilson. <laughs> I told you, Wilson, to bring WD forty. <laughs> Honestly, I love Dad's army. I don't know if you do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Emma's got, uh, got Trevor's hose out in the garden, so there may be some extraneous uh, noises. Mm-hmm. But to get back to uh, Madhead, did you have a a name for her similar to No, not really. Um, uh, did you keep a diary of your relationship with her? Well, the diary is the poetry and the songs. Okay, right. So Basically, kind of, But yeah. a lot of the songs, and a, not all the songs, and not mm-hmm. all the poems are inspired by her. Are, are, no, no, are, no. Yeah, but a lot of them are. Yeah. And sometimes we, we will be talking about something, and it will just <laughs> inspire me to write about whatever subject we've just been, we've been talking about. Right. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so this is a kind of, per- I mean, you do hear about these stars like Adele and so on, and they produce these amazing albums, you know, a bit like Blood on the Tracks, Dylan, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. was about his breakup with uh, Sarah, whatever she's called, yeah. his wife, and uh, the Adele 21 was a very poignant album, I suppose, because yeah. it was about the breakup and so on. So, I um, mean, it does seem as if, uh, unha- well, bre- un- sad events can inspire great music. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, this uh, thing that I went to the Metro Hotel, mm-hmm. and I did meet a lady who wrote the lyrics for one of your tracks. Who was that? Beth Thornton, her name is. That's it, Beth yes. Thornton, yeah, yeah lovely yeah. lady I was sat at the same table with. Yeah. Um, you had some um, young lads backing you up. Tell me about those. Well, I was I was determined that when, when I started to write the, the songs, because the, actually there was a split, I wrote all the poems first. Right. Um, and then, for some reason, I don't know why, they just more started to, I started to write songs. Um, and I was determined to record them because I was quite happy with them. I, I thought they were pretty good. Yeah. But I thought, well, I don't really want to work with anybody that I've worked with before. I want a completely new perspective on this. And I didn't really have a clue what I was going to do. And then I was, I, was, I was in a play in Formby. And I was talking to one of the girls who was in the cast and I was telling her my dilemma. And she said, I know four really good musicians here in Formby. Mm-hmm. They're sort of the house band at Cafe Dart. Mm-hmm. So they, she gave me their numbers and I phoned them up and um, we all met and they loved what I was doing. 
This is Conrad Littler, Matt Smith, Liam Williams, and Alex. How do you pronounce Mietka. it? Mietka. Mietka. Yeah. Is that Polish? Or? Yes, it is. He's right. not, but he, the, the his family was originally. Right. Yeah. right. So that's that's where I um. His, his mum and dad were there on the opening night. Actually, really, the first time I met them. Yes, I um. Mm. Uh, I talked to him actually afterwards. I yeah. think, come to think mm. of it, and uh, his mum came up and so on. I mean, this is an amazing album for all sorts of reasons. But one of the great strength, well, the artwork's superb. Yeah. Is this Lucy Norris and Megan uh, well, it's, it's Lucy Norris. Lucy actually. Norris, right. Yeah. And uh, Megan's just going to be looking after the, the websites, which she, that's what. And is Lucy Norris a Southport person? She's Formby. Formby, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And of course, some of the poems have this kind of music in the background, which is yeah. fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So it's an amazing album. If people want to buy your double album, Madhead, how do they do that? Well, they can buy it online um, through, the, through the Madhead website, madheadrocks.com. Yeah. If they wanted to buy a hard copy, this is what I'm trying to work out at the moment. I need a kind of a central point where they can, at the moment, they can just contact me via the website and I will send it to them. Um, but I, I need a central point where people can buy it and I haven't quite worked that out yet. And where did you record this album? Recorded it at the Rhythm Rooms in Southport, which is in the grounds of um, Mel's Cop School. Really? Yeah. How amazing. And it's uh, a guy called Tom Percy produced it. And um, he's brilliant, and he's got a, a, him and his partner John Ormrod run the place. But they also they're part of the Merseyside, the sorry, the Southport Youth Music Group. They they don't run it as such, but they're there to help people, um, young people particularly, get on the air, uh, get performing. There's a rehearsal room there as well. I do hear a lot of uh, good things about Mills Cop School, and my grandson is coming up to his last year at junior school, coming up now. Mm. So, uh, I don't know, I think he's quite keen to go to Mills uh, Cop I'm not sure whether the actual studio is, I don't think the studio is attached to Nothing the school. Nothing to do with the school. It's Fair just enough. in the grounds. Fair enough, right. Mm. Are you uh, okay for playing a live track? Do, can we get this uh, <laughs> are you tuned? Or do you want me to play another... No, 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 I, mean, I should be yeah, in tune. Okay, okay, right, <laughs> should be in tune, right. I was in tune, uh, yeah, you know, I was in, it was in tune when I bought it. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to play? What are you going to play? I'm going to play uh, the highs and lows. And is this the, uh, what's this about? This is, uh, Ar actually... Irish folk one. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, it, was, it is on the, on the CD. Whether it is the way I play it, we're, we're yet to find out. <laughs> All right. Because, as I said, the hand doesn't work very well. So Basically, this is, uh, actually, the first verse of it is the, the first night, if you like, that I, I saw Lisa for the first time in years. And the song is just about various moments in our life together. Okay. Okay, brilliant, brilliant, go. brilliant. Dave Walker's playing live on Mighty on the Sunday Express. If you hear Ow, it's just my wrist is gone, isn't it? Okay, right. I'll monitor the levels. I saw the face of an angel coming through the door with a body so divine it nearly knocked me off the floor. Where have you been all this time? I out of town I knew that if I picked you up I'd never put you down Are we going Along the same road Are we flying The way the wind blows Are we holding On to rainbows As we ride The highs and lows Stars in the sky And I told you all their names From a mountain made of diamonds That freed me from my chains And the boat on the water Going nowhere fast Was a picture frozen moment And I wondered would it last Are we going along the same road? Are we flying the way the wind blows? Are we holding rainbows as we ride the highs and lows on an island of dreams we watch the water dance knowing we would stay forever given half a chance then we cried in the night Lying by the sea Cause we knew the time was coming To give away the key Are we going Along the same road Are we flying The way the wind blows Are we holding On to rainbows As we ride 
the highs and lows. Radio. Reliable. Unpredictable. Informative. Local. Experimentation is the mother of invention. Expect the unexpected. Streffy on the radio. Here comes uh, another fabulous uh, David Walker track from the double CD Mad Head. This is called Let It Stand Alone. We'll be talking to Dave again in a few minutes. Your troubles are mine. We are the radio. We are the TV show. We are the echo of the world we know. Wake up to the new day. Take a look at the time. Mighty. 
Berry Road Garage, petrol and diesel service specialists, and MOT testing station. We also do clutches, brakes, shock absorbers, tracking, welding, engine tuning, and repairs. Tires, batteries, exhaust, and auto electrical faults. Remember, cars aren't just nuts and bolts anymore. We have the latest automotive diagnostic machines, offering a full diagnostic service to all makes and models. Open six days a week, Monday to Saturday. Call 01704 567 142 Berry Road Garage, 24A Berry Road, Southport. Take a look at our website, berryroadgarage.com, or find us on Facebook and Twitter. We treat your car like it's our own. Your strong radio station. This is Mighty Radio. Mighty Radio. Looking at buying a gift for a wedding, anniversary, or birthday, and don't know what to buy? Personalize your next gift for any occasion from Christine Lee Crafts. Choose from personalized name frames, wedding frames, and so much more. Planning a wedding? Need table decorations, wedding invitations, or table plans? Then search Christine Lee Crafts on Facebook or online at www.christineleecrafts.co.uk. Every Friday evening is Rockin' Western. For rock and roll and country and western, join the King Rock. Mark Anthony, every Friday evening from 7 till 10 here on Mighty Radio. Mighty Radio. A very good afternoon to each and every one of you out there in the mind of wonderful. We're getting loads of messages on my personal phone, indeed. Uh, that lady on the Wirral apparently has been told by her children that it's not cool to listen to me on the headphones, but she's hoping to get back to me soon. She enjoyed <laughs> the saw doctors. Okay, we're on uh, 2.31 and 15 seconds right here on Mighty Southport. Uh, MightySouthport.co.uk. Uh, we uh, have a lot of original programmes on this station. You know, we're not playlisted. We don't have that many adverts. Anyway, that, never mind about that. Let's get back to the one and only Dave Walker. How are you doing? You still haven't... Uh, you were the message in from Alan Wayne. He says, uh, if I'm passing, shall I pass some WD-40 in Hog? Uh, it's getting sunny over there on the Wirral. There's somebody else listening to us on the Wirral. So there we go. So we're in for a good week, you know, weather-wise, David. I know you keyed up about this, the mini heat wave, which is going to yeah. hit us yeah. in Southport. It's probably so. uh, about, for about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. Now then, yes. uh, a few minutes ago, we played, a, you played that live track, mm -hmm. which uh, was called... Um, Highs and Lows. Highs and Lows, right, sorry, as you explained, that's track six. And then I went into a CD track called Let It Stand Alone. Yeah. Okay, well... I don't know whether you picked this up. A few people have picked it up. But when I first started writing the songs for the album, I was, I was sitting at home and I had a table in front of me with pen and paper on and the guitar. And the first song I wrote for the album is the first song on the album. Lie in someone's Lie in arms. someone's arms. And I was writing it. Sounds a good idea, that, Dave, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Lisa was walking past me and then she just looked over my shoulder and she went, Ah, oh, thank you. And I said, What do you mean, thank you? And she said, Look, the, the, the title spells out my name, Let... Uh, lie in someone's arms. L I S A. Oh, I see. Yeah. Amazing. And then, of course, me being me, the next track is called Look I See Angels, which also spells Lisa. Do you know, I must go around with my eyes shut. And I, the one you just that. played, Let It Stand Alone, also spells Lisa. Amazing. Brilliant. <laughs> Those two were on purpose. The first one was a complete, just, just fluke. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, you're gonna play another live track, are you? Or yeah. what else are we gonna yeah. talk about? The uh, former painkillers, where Have you been watching the Olympics? I have been watching the Olympics, yeah. <clears throat> We're doing okay, aren't we? We're doing very well indeed. I was disappointed with, um, that, that Jessica Ennis Hill only got yes. second, but what a performance from the girl who was a Belgian, Belgian girl. Belgian girl. I mean, yeah. five, out of seven events, she got five personal bests. That's an incredible achievement. Mm. And of course, I, I did stay up to watch Mo Farah. Um, and he, he fell over, didn't he? He fell over. Yeah, yeah. fell over. It's how he was actually tripped over by his running partner. That's right. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and he got back up and won the 10,000 metres. Phenomenal achievement. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's been great once again um, in the pre athletics era for Britain, with the, with the, particularly with the rowing and the cycling, of course. And uh, we still got Andy Murray to come. He'll probably get a gold. Yeah, that's happening this afternoon against Del yeah. Potro, isn't it? I think that's it's right. a 4 p.m. Um, the good yeah. thing is, of course, Del Potro had an incredible match with Nadal last night. Oh, uh, was it a five-setter? No, it was a three-setter, because they're oh, all so, three-setters. Oh, three but right. they were long. The finals five-set, you know. Yeah, yeah. but um, and Maurice was over in very quick time. 
this well, that could be stuff. important, yeah. 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 So you don't support Everton anymore because you're a well, bit... No, I do. Have I you gone back I just, to Everton? I just yeah. don't... I never really left them. I just don't go to the matches anymore. Um, I haven't been to a football match for a very, very long time. Um, I'm an armchair supporter now. You used to work in a bank? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Gyra? Uh, it was, well, it was Gyra Bank, yeah. It was, um... Did they have any dodgy seats that led to broken legs or anything? No, no, <laughs> it was, it was... <laughs> no, they didn't, actually. It was a very, very good place to work at the time. I don't know what it's like to work, because it's changed hands. It was, it went from Gyra Bank to Alliance and Leicester, which was my job to make the trans to make the transformation in training packages. So you enjoy wearing a suit every day and a tie and... No, I never bothered doing you... that, except when I was presenting... I'm taking the class. Oh, I would just, oh right. Yeah. So you were front of house, obviously, no? No, but when I was front of house, then, yeah. yes, I did. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> but no, I hate wearing suits, I hate, hate ties. How's the pain level? How's your arm? It's, um... One it's, more track. I'm still tops. smart. Yes, yeah, I can, I can manage another track. <laughs> so what are we going to do this time, Dave? This one, um, is, is called More or Less. And it's the last track on the album. It's also the last track that I wrote, strangely enough. But... but this doesn't spell out L I. No, it doesn't. No. You slipped up here. No, <laughs> but what I was doing is I was playing around with this song, and Lisa actually said to me, "I love that. That's my favourite of all." She never heard the finished product, but she'd heard all the songs, and she said, "That is my favourite song of all, more or less." I absolutely love that song, and I said, "Well, I don't really know. I don't. I'm not quite sure what to do with it. It needs a chorus. It needs a middle eight or something." And she said, "It needs nothing. It's fine the way it is," and so we're left at the. And if people want to see uh, pictures of Lisa and this particular track in its entirety, mm -hmm. they can go to, what, my site? Uh, yeah, madhead.com, madheadrocks.com, and then my site. Okay, and you can see pictures of Lisa there, and, um, it, well... It's, it's actually a brilliant little video that um, our co-friend Sue has put together. Uh, it's, it's totally superb, fading, pictures fading in and out, yeah. and uh, to go with the song. Oh, right, that's Sue King. Oh, yeah, yes, Sue King's Sue, amazing. Sue, did, did Sue used to have, um, she put some of my stuff up on uh, YouTube, but of course there are massive uh, copyright issues, so it tends to be just me talking without the music going with it, which mm, rather mm. spoils the effect. But I'm very grateful to Sue, she's a great, a good friend. But uh, I only met her through radio. We were talking off air about how amazing radio can be and the people you meet. So you do mm. occasionally meet people you don't want to meet, but as it turns out, <laughs> Out, but um, yeah, but I mean, most of the people I've met through radio, absolutely fantastic. I met so many young people. But um, there was a UFO symposium at a church on uh, Poulton Road, as I can't remember. And uh, Sue and Johnny, do you know Johnny Booth? Yes. Yeah, right. So they came on, and they were sat where you were sat, and uh, that's how I got to know Sue. You see, I got to know so many amazing people yeah. through uh, radio that I don't particularly want to give it up in a hurry because uh, I enjoy it. Oh, it is great. So, so there we go. So we're going to play the last track. Uh, yeah, more or less. Yeah. So yeah. what's this about? Sorry, have you said this or not? Well, it's I um, I have it's, it's, it's about various things, but there's, the, the, I suppose the poignant line is because she did have problems, of course, Lisa, um, which eventually caused her death. Um, Self-inflicted problems, granted, but still problems nonetheless. Um, but there's the line. There's a line in the first verse of this song, um, which basically me saying, "I'll do everything I can to help." Right. Okay. So this is the song, anyway. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. fly with Icarus Let the sun try to shine as bright as us More or less you were lying in my bed Wish I knew what you're saying in your head Got the time on my hands To try to heal and Other's minds at the words, who knows what we might find. More or less, there is something in the air. Shall we dance the perfect dance? Do we dare? Got the feeling, got the need, got the love, but not. 
not the deep moral lands. More or less, we can read each other's minds. At the words, who knows what we might find. There's an island in the sun Once again We will hide from everyone Got the hope Got the desire If I could I'd light your fire Absolutely fabulous is David Walker playing live on Mighty Southport for a Sunday afternoon, the 14th of August. One, two, three, go. You know what it is. This is Mighty. This is Mighty. Welcome to Styles of Burtdale, Three Weld Parade, Burtdale Village. Hair extensions only fifteen pounds a row. Ten pounds off all colours for new clients, and twenty percent off perms and colours for existing clients. If you need some sun, our high tech sunbed is only a pound for three minutes. We look forward to welcoming you to our salon and having a coffee and consultation at your leisure. Styles of Burtdale Weld Parade, oh one seven zero four five six three eight nine three. Student cards welcome. Home style kitchen and bedroom manufacturing. See your kitchen and bedroom being made at our factory in Canning Road, Southport. All top materials are used. Homestyle has been invited into the top 100 trades. Recommended and endorsed by BBC's Dom Littlewood. Open to trade and retail. Call us now on 01704 543444. Your strong station for Southport. Mighty Radio. Wilson Auto Bodies provide excellent vehicle and commercial van repair service. Wilson Auto Bodies in Shakespeare Street, Southport, offer full garage services, accident damage, all paintwork undertaken, MOTs and services, tires and exhausts, alloy wheel refurbs, full accident management, free mobile estimates, and we even have a courtesy car available for you. We also offer 24-hour roadside breakdown. Wilson Auto Bodies, specialists in non-fault accident aftercare. Call us on 0170. 539606. Let us assess your claim for free. Email us at enquiries at wilsonautobody.co.uk. Are you in a band? Want to come on Mighty Radio to play live? Join Martin Hobden for live sounds every Wednesday evening from 7 till 10 here on Mighty Radio. Mighty Radio. Okay, dokie, okay. this is Mighty Radio. There's, I don't think I don't think that can be disputed. Uh, we're broadcasting from the heart of uh, Southport. We've got a fantastic studio here, haven't we, uh, David? Yeah. We've, we've got it's toilet. Great. We've got, uh, I don't know, a kettle over there. We've got masses of room. It's got air in it, yes. It's got air, yes, we've got air. We have got air. Yeah. And uh, those noises with Emma doing the uh, hose appear to have uh, dissipa- yeah. dissipated or even gone away. So it's uh, almost, uh, a little bit of it. it's almost <laughs> 17 minutes ago before three. Thank you so so much for dropping by. You can stay as long as you want, by the way. Uh, it's, uh, but you may have other plans and so on. We are going to play a track soon called Let It Go. Mm. Let It Go. This is your favourite track on the album it coming is, up. Yeah, yeah. The, the reason is that it's the way it was put together, really. Um, <clears throat> it's one of those songs that in the studio you watch it develop over a period of a couple of months, going back to it and then leaving it and listening to it. It started off, well, exactly the same as it is now, but I had this idea of having big brass in it. Right. And we tried that, and it sounded utterly awful. And I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, and we were all sort of humming and harring, and uh, the band, and Tom, the producer, and myself, and all of a sudden, Matt, who was the guitarist, started to play piano on it. Uh-huh. Oh. And I went, that's it. That's, that's, Eureka. that's it. Exactly, <laughs> Eureka. And so because of that, we call this, um, we always call this our Jules Holland song. So we've got little, little passwords for each song. <laughs> 
Uh, the one you said you before. Should be on, you should be on Jules Holland, but you probably have to pay or something. I've heard you have to pay to be a Jules Holland. Allegedly. I better put yeah, allegedly in there. <laughs> you go down great uh, Glastonbury and stuff. Do you fancy doing anything like that? Is that just yeah, the No, I think we're, we're going to look at ways of, of getting what we've done live and getting out there. Because the show we did at the um, uh, Metro, mm. I may set the whole show with us. Mm. Which would be really nice because you've got George and D uh, Dougie is, is guitarist doing original material. Then we had Joe in the middle, of course, who did a cabaret spot, and then she stayed on stage. What's she called, Joe? Joe Howarth. Oh yeah, she was on the same table as me. A very bubbly lady. Yes. And uh, she's got a child, and she young two. child, she, two young children. And I was talking to her husband. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's quite weird. Her two children, George, who's the eldest, is is um, it's great. I get on really well with George. But Teddy, the youngest, he just points at me and screams whenever he sees me. I, <laughs> Does that happen with other people? Or? No, no, no. Um, <laughs> well, it might do, but not to my face. <laughs> Where have you played in Southport and other places? What kind of gigs have you done over the oh, years? I've done with, with the Pubs. band I was in with George Yamasa. We played all over the place. George Windsor, yeah. Yeah, we did the... He's uh, threatening to come on my show, by the way. Be great. In September, George says he can't do it till September. Yeah. He rang me the other day when I was swimming with my grandkids, uh, and he said, oh, I'm fishing with my lad. Uh, I'll try and get on in September. <laughs> and that's going to be amazing, because George was an ex-pupil, and he's like 50 now into yeah. something, yeah? yeah. So, sorry, where have you played? Well, um, we've played all, uh, just about all the pubs that do live acts in Southport, from the, um, the Wellington... Which is an interesting experience. Um, <laughs> what was that? East Bank Street? Yeah, yeah the ship yeah, yeah. in opposite it. Um, the ship in, yeah, I've been in the, there. What was the one on the corner, the Volunteer? Right, yeah. Um, the little tiny Oast House, which getting a four-piece band on there was brilliant, because <laughs> you're on the ledge at the back. Oh, right. And that was, but we used to, we used to play there Sunday afternoons, and there would be sweat running down the inside of the wall. It was that like busy. Like the cavern, like the cavern yes, used, very, very used to be. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Fisherman's Rest, we played on there. Uh, <laughs> Have you played the Fisherman's Rest? That yeah. is my local. I love the Fisherman's yeah, Rest. It's there. such a wonderful vibe. And I think Ed and Jill, this is just my opinion, yeah. are the best landlords I've ever come across. He's just amazing. I was in on uh, Father's Day with my daughter and two grandkids. Of course, I paid. Yeah, obviously. But, uh, there we go, obviously. <laughs> but uh, Ed made such a fuss of the grandchildren and such a fuss of my daughter. It was just brilliant. He's just got yeah. the touch, hasn't he? I asked him to come on the show once, but I don't think he wants to. It's not mm. really his scene. But well, when uh, we played whatever, there, yeah. it was fascinating because um, George and I, George and I have a lot of rows in music. We never fall out, though. We never, ever fall out. We just, because we, we both want the same thing. But we just have different ways of achieving it and different ideas about music. So, and we actually had one on stage live. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, the landlord thought was the best thing he'd seen. <laughs> the other two used to just stand back and go, oh, here they go again. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, right, okay, so you, yeah, you should play a festival. You know, Bickers, Bickerstock's on today, isn't it? Uh, yeah. A few of my friends yeah. are at Bickerstock today. Well, we did one last year in Formby, we did the Formby Live Festival. It's actually just a quick, interesting story about that. We were getting ready to go on stage, and there was a, uh, a, a little man in there, and he was quite drunk, and he was saying about, he loved what, what we were going to play. He was asking me about what songs we were going to do and everything. Mm. And I recognised him straight away, but he was such a, he, he clearly he'd had a lot to drink, but he was mm. very personal. And it was Howard Kendall. Oh, right. And he was really, really pleasant to us, and he stayed for the whole evening for everybody. So we were on the farm, was on as well. And he was, um, tragically well, died now, but he was, um... Well, I never met him, but lots of my friends did meet him and talked about the mm. uh, drinking and so on. But, yeah, what a lovely guy he was yeah. to boot. And, of course, as an Everton fan, that would have been quite... Because yeah. he, he played for uh, Preston when he was age 17 in the 1964 FA Cup Final. Show me age again here. That's right. no, he was yeah, the youngest right. player to play in the FA Cup Final. I think that was maybe beaten by a West Ham guy much later on, but... Yes, mm. so there we are. So, he, he, right, so there we go. He enjoyed your music. Yeah, well, he enjoyed the East Day for everybody. He was there for the whole night. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't speak to him at the end of the night. Maybe he was not able to. I don't know. <laughs> but a lovely man. Who are your kind of uh, musical... <clears throat> do you have any musical heroes or people you particularly like, uh, lyrically, like Dylan or something of that well, nature? Yeah, I mean, Dylan was obviously an inspiration, but I think I've always gone for songs rather than the artists. Mm -hmm. So if a song's good, I like the song. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who it's by. Mm -hmm. um, I like a lot of the stuff that uh, Bowie's done, as I say. He's been, mm -hmm. He was a big influence on me musically. Well, Bowie's uh, posthumous album, Black Star, yeah. is the favourite for the Mercury Music Award, yeah, right. which is announced on the 15th of uh, September. Yeah, that's right. Which, incidentally, I've just got tickets for the View Cinema on the 15th of September. I don't know if you heard about this. There's a Beatles film, and it's just a one-off, and they're showing it in... 
kind of live. Well, yeah. I've just got a lot of footage of, of them back in the early uh, days and so uh -huh. on. Did you know that Ringo Starr was the first person to own a VHS recorder? That was, was one it? of my quiz questions uh, rec George. recently. <laughs> was he really? <laughs> and George Harrison, let's think of some Beatles facts. George Harrison put a lot of money into uh, the Meaning of Life film, Monty Python. Yeah. Let's yeah. come out of this quickly. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so go, sorry, so songs that particularly inspired you? It's just been songs. It's, I mean, I've, I've always liked the music of U2, although it's probably never always been fashionable to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I, I think Adele is wonderful. I think she's such a talented... Um, Fabulous voice. Yeah, um, for, for all-round performer, Make you, make you feel my love, the Dylan uh, copy. Uh, yes. Uh, tribute, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I also love them. She swears um, too much. Thirty-three swears. Uh, Glastonbury, you'd never swear on stage, would you? Unless me? George, unless George Windsor annoys unless, you. Yeah, unless George Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I try not to swear on stage. I have done on occasions, um, particularly playing guitar. When I was able to play guitar on stage, when I've got my fingers caught in the strings and it's. Oh right. I was yeah. just also, I've got to tell you this. I, I did swear once quite loudly. When at the you won't be able to see this because it's radio, but at the end of one song, I threw my fist up in the air. You know the way you do yeah, at the yeah, end of yeah. the song, yeah. And it was a low ceiling, and I broke <laughs> my hand. <laughs> I did say a few you things literally like broke your hand. Yes, oh, God. I did manage to say a few things like flipping it. That hurt. Yes, uh, yeah. Dash. Did you say dash? Dash. Or crikey, or something like that. Yes. Dear, oh dear. Dear, oh dear. I say. I say. I say. <laughs> yes. So, uh, did the ceiling recover, or uh, <laughs> did the ceiling come down? <laughs> no, it didn't. It was stronger than me. I tell you that. <laughs> Let's play this tune, and then we'll decide what we're going to do. Okay. There is a place only spoken of in legend, forgotten by time, hidden by an ancient code. But its lure is so powerful, some spend their whole life searching for it. It's the world of Streffy, a parallel universe, daring to be different. More to follow. Go, of course, uh, track 10 off the late recent uh, David Walker album called Madhead. Messages coming in about the uh, Dave Walker section of the program. Uh, bye. Uh, Been nice listening to Dave. That's coming in from Yorkshire Island.
Fading away into the distance, into the ether. Uh, yeah, there we go. Let it go. Trap from the Mad Hat album. Dave, we're going to say goodbye, uh, I think. Yes, we'll draw this part of the program to its inevitable and ine- inexorable conclusion. It's been fabulous to meet you, and I thought the live tracks were amazing. Um, d- how did you find the second live track? Were you a bit of pain, or...? It was a bit, yeah, it's a little bit painful, but I mean, um... You know, because you playing you playing right handed, obviously. I'm playing right handed, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Well, it's, it's the right hand that obviously plays the rhythm. So all you got to do is just suck it in and go for it, as they say. Right. Mm. So how do you see the future? I mean, that, that, that is a really <laughs> rubbish question that interviewers always ask. How do you see the future? Well, what I want to do is put together a, a Madhead show. So I'm, I mean, I'm writing songs at the moment for the next one, uh, Madhead Two, which has the subtitle "Not Done Yet." Um, right. So uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna write that and maybe put try and put together some sort of a show which would include recorded versions of some of the poems and I want to do something that I don't think has ever been done before and I'm in conversation with some dancers at the moment to put a dance routine to the opening poet poem. Wow, wow. that'd be brilliant. It's the first track on the thing. Yeah. Now uh, we are going to play "Look at the Angels" as you uh, leave stage left or right. Um, "Look at the Angels." Has this got anything to do with Robbie Williams and, no. a, and a rap? No, <laughs> this was this was Paul Baker, who was the PR man from Boxed Off, who uh, decided that it sounded like a Robbie Williams type rap. Um, but you don't think it does? No. Well, I've never really thought about it. No. The rap was actually written by Lisa. Right. She wrote the lap and uh, the rap, and although it sounds it's, it sounds nonsense, uh, which most rap does, I suppose. But th- this is it actually every line is an instant that she wrote down oh, of our yeah. lives together. All hysterically funny, by the way. And yeah. the repeating line is um, uh, at the end of each at the end of the rap of each rap is "You're not on my list." And I've got time to quickly tell you what that's about. We were in, we were staying in a hotel in Preston because we used to go to Blackpool Third and stay in the Holiday Inn in Preston because we loved it. Mm. And we were in the bar one night, and this bloke who was at the bar, Medallion Man, with an American accent, right? And he came over and he sat next to us. That is the couple, obviously talking, obviously together. Mm. And he just decided to come over and talk to us mm-hmm. with this American accent, which obviously turned out to be phony. And he was telling me, uh, "I am a secret agent <laughs> for Revenue and Customs." And I have been designated to find out where you get your money from. And I said, that's a coincidence. I work for Revenue and Customs. <laughs> and he said to me, you can't work for Revenue and Customs. You're not on my list. <laughs> and I said, you don't know my name. I'll get on my list. <laughs> 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 he, was, he wasn't American. He was, he was the local bloke. But um, he just annoys people. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where, the, and, and when Lisa wrote the rap bit, she just put that in. <laughs> Brilliant. Not on the list. All right, so uh, after we say our uh, cheerios in a minute, we are going to play Look at the Angels, but before that, we're going to play one of your poems, mm-hmm. The Product of Boredom, and I believe there's a bit of a story behind this one, the poem. Yeah, um, I, I was. I did a, an interview for Mersey Radio, and the bloke who was interviewing me, Alan, he was interested in this poem, and he thought it was, he said it would be very cathartic for other people who are suicidal and depressed. And I thought, well, it's the first line. The first line of the poem is, Death, where is thy sweet embrace? You meant it tongue-in-cheek. It's tongue-in-cheek. It's about sitting in an office on a hot day wishing you were dead because you just, you can't, it's just so (laughs) boring. And and that's what it's about. It's actually a comedy. And we've got a a lady called Elspeth Fisher who's actually reads this poem out. um, And she reads it with this sort of almost tongue-in-cheek. How you can take it seriously the way Elspeth does it, I have no idea. (laughs) 
Dave, it's been fantastic Thank meeting you. you. You've been a fabulous guest. I thank you so much for gracing the Sunday Express. It's been a great pleasure. Afternoon. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully we've got a, a copy of the show and hopefully uh, this bit of the show will end up on YouTube fairly soon if Sue King has anything uh, to do with it. Hopefully we will meet again. And uh, between you and me, we need you to get your, your back on radio doing a kind of uh, uh, arts programme. But that's mm. just my uh, humble opinion. Do you like to come back on radio? I certainly would. Yeah. You have done some radio, haven't yes. you? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. So uh, there, there we are. That's uh, David Walker, my special guest today. Massive thanks to him, of course. Now, don't forget, we're going to play The Product of Boredom. And uh, this is not about feeling suicidal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's tongue in cheek. And it's read by Elspeth. Elspeth Fisher. And uh, she's part of the uh, Formby Little Theatre yeah. set up. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we go. This is poetry live on the radio. You see, we, there's not many radio stations would play poetry. No. You no. know what I mean? But we, it's nice to have that kind of freedom on, the, on this radio station. Where is thy sweet embrace? Through this opaque window creeps the creaking world, devoid of humanity, swamped with insanity. Biting my soul, bring on thy sweet embrace. Death, where is thy gentle kiss? For right there, just beyond my pleading fingers, lies the pillow of eternal comfort, teasing my soul. Caress me, gentle kiss. Death, why do you torture me so? Touch me and hold me and make it all better. Inject me with oblivion and rescue my dreams. For now I am ready to ride on your wing. Death, wrap me in diamonds. Cut me and shape me with your bold darkness. Lift me and carry me to the land of sparkling jewels and lay me forever in clover to sleep with the breeze. Death, play me your music, strum me and pluck me and blow me your melody, laughing and crying and heated and chilled with symphonic bliss. Oh, death, sing me to sleep. I do. You, you actually uh, write some poetry, don't you? On well, I wrote all the sorry, poems. Sorry, sorry. I mean, you actually do the reading of some of the poems. Some of them, yeah. some of them poems. Mm. By the way, before we go to the next tune, uh, we must say hello to Barry Nicholson, who's just sent me a message on my phone. He's listening in Northampton. He's a great guy, uh, Dave. I met him on holiday in Cyprus about three years ago. He's listened to my show ever since. Uh, he has sought medical help, but uh, <laughs> it's done no good, apparently. Uh, he's a great guy. He lives in Coventry. He's working in a mill in Northampton, mm. apparently. He gets paid a reasonable amount of money, so that's why he does it. And uh, welcome to the program, uh, Barry. So there we are, the product of boredom. That's, uh, there's 19 poems, isn't there, and 16 songs. It's fabulous, uh, value for money. Madhead. I think you'd be mad, you listeners out there, if you didn't try and get hold of this uh, double album. I really mean that. Now, uh, we're going to go to uh, uh, Look, I See Angels. And, uh, yes, and Dave was talking about that uh, before. So, uh, as you listen to the lyrics of this song and so on, uh, you will hopefully remember what uh, Dave Walker was saying about this a few minutes ago. <laughs> On the list. A little bit of magic spell was short but very sweet. 
Uh, by the way, Dave has just said off air, he regrets uh, not thanking the squeaky chair for the backing on his live track. So we better thank the squeaky chair. Seeing passion and belief. You're not on the list. So I shivered half in torment, half in wonderment and joy. Some of me was flesh and blood, and some of me a toy. The velvet tones of insolence were crashing through my soul. Everything was on the edge of cosmic rock and roll. Look, I see angels. I heard them sing. Look, it's Michael K. Now, if you need great music, the best trivia, dodgy jokes, stuff out of papers, battle of the listeners, etc., etc., you've got to listen to the Chris Strefford show. Not a lot of people know him. Streffy, I told you, just to blow the listeners' ears off.